And here to tell us more about the state of malaria research is an expert in the field from the Max Planck Institute for Infection Biology, Kai Matuszewski. Thanks for joining us here on Tomorrow Today. Now, isn't that really risky to use a living malaria parasite for vaccination? I mean, who, who would take the risk? Well, I would certainly take the risk because I know about the um, impact of malaria. Um, every live vaccine is a risk and um, we have to be prepared to take that risk. Now in Tübingen, you're in very good hands. It's, uh, it's a very good clinic. You are supervised 24-7 throughout the clinical trial. Uh -huh. and, and so that would work. There's no risk for the um, volunteers of this vaccine trial. Okay, and, um, yeah. But the approach then is actually not feasible for Africa. Not as it is now. So to transfer this to Africa is a long way to go. You, mm -hmm. you cannot simply imagine to take this vaccine on a moped to a small village and start mm -hmm. vaccinating young children. But this is a way forward to develop a whole attenuated parasite vaccine. Uh -huh. What could you actually learn from a trial like this? Well, what we still don't understand is the signatures, as we call it, the signs of protective immunity. What is it actually that we recognize in order to mount an immune response that we don't see in the field? Mm -hmm. and, and so to disentangle the, the small antigens, the immune cells that provide this uh, unprecedented level of protection is really what all the researchers would like yeah, to understand. Yeah. And so, so the advantage of using a whole parasite would be that there are lots of different approaches. The parasite, so to say, shows lots of different faces for the totally, immune system. Totally. We, because we don't know what the protective antigens are, we have to leave it to every individual to recognize whatever they have as a protective uh, antigen. Mm -hmm. Now we've heard in the report that there is another vaccine called RTSS that has received a stamp of approval from Europe's medicine watchdogs. What do you think of that? It's a first step. It's a very important step. It's the first malaria vaccine ever. It does a fairly okay job in, in preventing clinical disease. So a third of the kids are having fewer episodes, but it doesn't do well at all for the severe malaria, for the um, implications and the mortality of malaria. So we are, we are nowhere near to having this as a tool to stop malaria mortality. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's an important step forward, but currently it acts like a bed net, I would say. I understand. So as long as we don't have any vaccinations, of course, we need good medicine. Artemisinin is uh, kind of getting weaker. Are there any new substances in the pipeline? Well, not really. They are very early in the pipeline. There are a couple of good candidates. People now engage more to identify these um, new medicines and compounds, but we sort of lost time. And now with the threat of um, tolerance against artemisinin, we really have to speed up to develop new antimalarials. Mm -hmm. How important is that fight against, to, to win that fight against malaria? It's one of the major challenges, medical challenges in this century. It's one of the top three killers together with HIV and TB. And uh, it's, it's something we have to address as a community. Thanks a lot for the talk, Kai Matuszewski.